or Psalm 46, be still and know that I am God. And also James, be doers and not just hearers of the word. Because life in the 21st century is amazingly, is, is as amazing as it is fast with new technological innovations every day and we know about them here in this church, right? Just trying to keep up to date with our software. You know, since Mary last um, was showing the videos and so on, we've upgraded our, our media show. It looks different. It is different. It may be a little, feel a little more difficult right now. But Rita said, after a while, there's better features. But software and technology is always being updated. And sometimes we can feel frazzled by all of that busyness in our lives. So with so much to do with this fast-paced lives we live, how can slowing down actually help us find our visions? So we said those aspects was to slow down, do slow down enough to be aware of your surroundings. This will help you create your vision. Do work on your listening and seeing skills. Make an effort to be present in every situation. Slow down and be present in every situation. I was grateful for two guys today that slowed me down to say good morning to me slowed me down. I was present in that moment. Yes, I was preparing other things, but being present in the moment is always important. Do work. Uh, don't assume that just because you're paying excellent attention that you fully understand a situation. There is nothing wrong with asking a lot of questions. Ask a lot of questions. In fact, that was one of the ways in which Jesus taught. People would ask him questions, and instead of giving them a straight answer, he would ask them more questions. Remember when they said, who, so who is my neighbor? So I'm supposed to love myself, my neighbor as myself. And remember they came to Jesus and said, well, who is my neighbor? And then he tells a story. He tells a story. And at the end of the story, he says, so, who is the neighbor? He asked them a question. Asking questions is really, really good. I like the idea of listening. Sometimes I think I know what I need to do later, but I find out because I didn't listen carefully, I was wrong. That happens, I don't know about you, but it happens to me a lot, frequently. But today, our key concept is, and this one, it gets a little bit more difficult, I think, is hold on to the best and let the rest fall away. I often hear over and over again, but all that I do is good. Everything I'm involved in is good. They're all good things. but hold on to the best and let the rest fall away. It's amazing how when we focus on just a few things, how we can do those few things much better than 10 things. Strong and powerful visions are focused and they're sharp. They tell a story, they serve a purpose, they facilitate a goal and they solve a problem. They are such an important element in our lives and in our work. We want to make sure our visions always have this sharpness, this power, in order to ensure that we can obtain our visions to the fullest potential. They need to be balanced and put together correctly. So the next step is to incorporate our intellect. Now in the Wesley Quadrilateral, this would be reason. Okay, the Wesley Quadrilateral is the way in which we can look at scripture through tradition, reason, and experience. We're going to see just this short film, and then I'm going to talk to, you, talk to you about how those two scriptures that I read today have been an overarching theme in my life, and how one day as I was walking through Times Square, how out 
of that crowd came a vision and it was focus. So listen to this and watch this. As we slow down. How many times you've, you've proposed something and, and you, you get that vision and instead of using an and, you've used a but. Listen to the difference between this. We're going to have a community party. Sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? We're going to have a community party, but it's too expensive. Sound familiar? We're going to have a community party, but it didn't go well last year. Sound familiar? We're going to have a community party, but how do we know people will come? Sound familiar? How about using an and instead when you're a group of people? We're going to have a community party. Sounds like a great idea. We're going to have a community party and hold it outside. We're going to have a community party and hold it outside and invite our families. We're going to have a community party and hold it outside and invite our families and serve hamburgers and hot dogs and sweet corn. Just a simple, simple exercise when you're working with, a, with uh, whether you're working at a community group, whether you're working with a mission team here, is when you propose an idea, instead of jumping to the butts, have everyone in the group, everyone in the group, be able to add an and. And after about five to 10 minutes, maybe 15 at the most, you'll actually have a clear, concise vision of what you proposed in the first place. Now, I was struggling. I was struggling with what I was going to do with the rest of my life. I had a vision and I wasn't quite sure how it was going to happen. I had always had a vision when I was six, seven years old that I was going to be a teacher. And that kind of propelled me. It kind of gave me the oomph to go on. And then I accomplished that. And then when things got rough, I followed another goal. I followed another vision and that vision was of making money. And that worked out really well. I made a lot of money. And one day, I was coming back from my office in New York City, and I had been kind of debating, and I did not know that I was really actually using Wesley's quadrilateral, but I was. <laughs> And I was discerning and talking to myself about, yes or no, should I go to seminary? And then I thought there was this voice in my head, but if you say yes, it does, you don't know where you're going. Because if you say yes to God, wow, you have no control over where that w might be. I won't have any control over how much money I make. I might be really poor. And I might be homeless for a while. Who knows? Well, for those of you that have been in New York City and been around uh, Times Square, it's a rather busy place all the time. But especially, especially at between 4 and 6 o'clock when you have rush hour traffic going to the subways, going to the tra train station, going to the bus station. And I was on my way to Port Authority. And along the way, there are homeless people that are fed by young adults who put food down on blankets and, and yeah, along the sides. Well, I noticed that that day, but, and I, I kind of felt a, a tug, but I kept thinking. And as I was crossing, like you really should be paying attention when you cross the street in New York City. You all agree? Right? You should be paying, even if you're in a crowd of people, you should be paying attention to whether the light has changed and what's happening around you. But instead, I'm walking with this question. I'm walking with a question. And across Times Square, standing in Times Square, looking at me, 
is this homeless man. Well, he appeared to homeless. It's summer. He had all, of his, all kinds of clothes on. He had a cart. He looked pretty homeless. And he smiled at me. Uh, from afar. I mean, we're not up close. We're far away. Close enough for me to see his face, though. And he smiled, toothless smile, and he said, yes. He looked at me and he said, yes. Yes. And I said, me? And he said, yes. Powerful vision. In the midst of all of those people, teeming with people, and this one. Scripture guides our visions. This bit, this, they're there. Everything, hold on to the best and let the rest fall away. So I hold on to that vision. When did I see you hungry and thirsty? That's the vision. That is all of our visions, really to know, love, and serve God in this world and to do as Jesus did. Let's capture that vision. Spend some time. Today, you're not going to spend time with your neighbors, and you're going to say, oh, darn, I really wanted to spend time with my neighbors today. But today, you're not. So that green sheet that you have is for your reflection. Next week, we'll have a little more time that you can reflect on this week and next week and um, get into your, to your groups, but not today. Today, for your reflection, the choir is back. And this is awesome. I'm so grateful to have our choir back for our time of reflection as they sing. As we come to this uh, time of prayer, are there any uh, prayers of joy, thanksgiving that you would like to share? Mm -hmm. Prayers of joy or thanksgiving. Any prayers of concern this morning? Well, I am, my prayers are with the Syrian refugees and the people of Hungary that are lining up, waiting to receive them. And also for Germany um, as, the, as a country who is ready to receive several hundred thousand refugees. So my prayers are with all of them as they welcome the stranger and try to love neighbor as self. Any others? So generous, God, pour out your love. Any others this morning? Then let us offer our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings for our work here in this community and how we extend into the wider world.
please join with me? We give you these gifts, gracious God, trusting that you will use them to proclaim your word throughout our world. We give them knowing that whatever we share can help to shine your light in defiance of all destruction. We seek to help your light shine, knowing that nothing can ever extinguish it. Amen. And you may be seated. Heaven declares God's glory. Without speech or words or even voice. Our Creator is good and loving. And so we gather to celebrate the goodness of God, who has made the world and all that is in it. From the beginning, God set forth patterns that remind us of God's care. At every, at every turning. Night becomes day, trees grow tall and birds soar, fish swim and dolphins play, kangaroos and elk fill the forests. Day after day we hear the call of God to care for this amazing earth and its wondrous creatures. Sometimes we care, too often we do not. Caught up in our own concerns, we are careless with what God has entrusted us with. And we, as well as other parts of our creation, suffer. Yet God's love continues to nurture and to sustain in the midst of our ignorance. Still, Christ comes to us and offers us a word of promise. A reminder that God's love is greater than all of our failures and our shortcomings. And so we give thanks. Holy God, wondrous God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, glory, praise. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, glory, praise. We remember how Jesus, beloved child of God, even in the face of betrayal, torture, and death, still gathered with closest friends and shared the Passover meal with them. Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to God. He broke it. He passed it around the table and said, take this and eat it. And Jesus said, and remember me. We remember you, dear Jesus. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and offered thanks to God. Take this and drink from it, Jesus said, and remember me. As you invited us to be your guests, so now do we invite you to remain close to us in this meal and always. When we are afraid, may the memory of this meal sustain us. When we are uncertain, may the memory of this meal ground us in your love. When we feel unworthy, may the memory of this meal remind us that we are never alone. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of Christ, that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ, redeemed by the pouring out of your life. And let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us.
There are three stations um, this morning. Um, there are two up here where you can kneel, and then there will be one in the back for those that um, want to come in the back. And don't forget, our communion offering today is for Iowa, Nigeria. <laughs> 